Hey guys, welcome to episode 13 of the Aspiring Polymath. I'm here with uh, Neil, uh, my soon-to-be good friend, <laughs> great <laughs> and acquaintance. Um, so, uh, Neil, how's how's it going? Uh, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, it's going pretty good. Okay, uh, my name is Neil Johnson. I am the owner of uh, actually a, a few different companies now. Um, I have a, a real estate investment company, which is called Now Property Investments. That's like our main company where we uh, buy and hold, fix and flip, and we basically help uh, uh, serve sellers when they are in like sticky situations, such as like foreclosure, uh, they need to relocate or uh, any type of like problem where they can't actually sell on the market, which would actually be better, be better for them to sell off market. I also own a company called <clears throat> Able Assistant, which is a residential assisted living, and we currently have one up in Fairfield, Texas, where we are, uh, you know, currently um, accepting residents. And um, we just started, the last thing is we just started a um, a real estate fund. And I can't really talk too much about that because I don't want it to be like, a, this is not any type of, uh, I guess, uh, this is not any type of advertisement or any type of like, uh, I'm not soliciting anything or anything like that. So the SEC does not uh, think anything like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so the, I guess there are certain requirements in order for you to have that kind of fund, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, and so let's talk a little bit more about now property investments, since that was that was what I was kind of zeroing in on. But I see you got you got your hands in a in a couple of different pots here. But it seems like they're all they're all centered around real estate. Yeah, they're all kind of uh, aligned for sure. Yeah. So I was I was looking at your your website a little bit just to get a good idea of what you guys do exactly. I know you had you had mentioned it on the Discord chat like a while ago, but I wanted to get a uh, refreshed idea of it. Um so if I'm if I'm a um, homeowner and maybe I'm behind on my mortgage and I come to now property and I'm like, "Okay, hey, I want to quote fill out the stuff on the website." What 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 transpires from that point? So uh, once you go online and you fill out the uh, the little form on the website, my assistant will usually contact me and let me know that someone's filled it out. Uh, I'll email you right then and there, just basically reaching out, letting you know, uh, hi, my name's Neil, blah, 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 just giving you simple information, just letting you know that I'm here and uh, looking to set up a, a either a phone interview or possibly actually coming out to the house and uh, looking at what that house actually looks like. Once we do that uh, and we have like the, a little phone interview, if you want to move forward and me actually come out and look at the home and make you an offer, we'll do that. Um, we make an offer right then, right then and there on the spot. And the price that we give you is the price that we can actually give you. I know a lot of people, sometimes they'll give you a price and then they'll like come back a couple weeks later and be like, oh, actually, I can't give you that price. I had to go down. And that's why we actually come out to the house. So like the offer that we give you is the offer that stands. Oh, okay. Wait, was that me? I just heard this weird sound. I don't know. Can you, can you hear it now? Uh, a little. Can you hear me clearly? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So I guess that should be fine. So uh, I guess before we get too far, how did you how did you get the idea to do this? Or how did you get started with this? Where did where? Oh, I guess we can start with where did your real estate uh passion begin and how did you get into now property investments for sure so um my mom she's actually my business partner and she's been in real estate since like the early 2000s like i think like 2002 or 2003 something like that she's been a realtor since then and um i was going to uta and i graduated in 2018 when i graduated i was working for a uh, i was working for dallas county health and human services and uh, i remember graduating, being so excited, like, all right, cool. Like I've been at Dallas County Youth Health, Health and Human Services for like, I think it was two years at that point. I was talking uh, on the phone with my friend and I was like, yeah, uh, I think I'm just going to work my way up the ladder. You know, it's not really an exciting job, but you know, it pays the bills and uh, I think I can, you know, work my way to the top because I'm still pretty young and I've gotten in pretty early. And then um, he, he's from Dallas, but he was living in North Carolina at that point and he was going to Davidson. And he's one of those friends where, like, you know, you, you need a friend like him because he's one of the ones that they're just going to keep it real with you. 
And he just just started like spazzing on me, just like going off like, dude, you got all this potential. Why would you waste it away in the uh, in the public sector? They're not gonna pay you anything. You're you're not even enjoying your job. Blah blah blah. And then he was like, I have friends up here, and they're telling me like, if uh, they were in Dallas, they'd be in uh, real estate. And you know, he just kept going on and on and on. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever, you know. But something about that conversation kind of like clicked. And um, um, basically, like a, a few days later, I was like, man, like maybe I am wasting my time up here. Maybe, you know, like this isn't fulfilling. I'm just basically doing just what other people at the county are doing and just kind of like just, I don't know, just like wasting my life away up here. So after that, I went and I talked to my mom and basically told her like, hey, I think I want to uh, be a realtor. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. And she's one of the ones, like, she's a huge action taker. So, um, like, a few days later, she came up to me and she was like, hey, Neil, like, you know, uh, I know you said you want to be a realtor, but I found this real estate investing course, and I think this would be cool for us. And I was like, what is real estate investing? And she was like, oh, for, you know, you buy and sell, fix and flip, all the other good stuff. See, I didn't know uh, there were actual, like, like, real estate investors. I thought people just, like, I don't really know how I thought like houses were sold or like <laughs> it was just like, oh, okay, cool. So um, we made a, a quick investment. It was like $500 or whatever. She was like, yeah, it's $500. You put 250 in, I'll put 250 in and, you know, we can get the course. And that's basically where the journey started. And from there, it's just really been like a, a blessing. We've been able to help a lot of people through like a lot of tough situations and, um, you know, it's helped their lifestyle and our lifestyle as well. So. Okay, that's cool. That's a cool beginning. Uh, do you remember by any chance which which course you took? Because uh, I was I'm actually planning to get into that myself. Yeah, so the course I took really wasn't a great course, but uh, the guy his name is Dean Graziosi, and um, okay, it, it basically gave me the um, I guess it gave me the basics of what real estate investing is. It didn't really give me like. Uh, the nitty gritty of what I needed, but it gave me a solid foundation to be like, okay, well, this is a real thing and I can really move forward from here. Oh, okay. okay. So I think I I could probably skip that one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but uh, after him, like I I did Dean's or whatever, then after him, started watching like Max Maxwell and stuff like that. But most of that is more for like the wholesaling. And uh, when we first started, we were doing a lot of wholesaling but now we do more just like the fix and flip and like the buy and holds and stuff like that. Okay. Okay. So uh, for people listening and I guess also to jog my own memory, wholesaling is where like you, you get a contract to buy the house and then you go sell that contract to someone else. Right. Is exactly. That, that yeah. Means? Yeah. Okay. You, you get a contract from the seller uh, and you're not, usually the wholesaler is not going to actually purchase the home. And uh, they'll just put whatever their fee is on top of that and sell it to the end buyer, which, uh, you know, sometimes wholesaling gets a bad name, but it's actually great because in any industry that, you know, like there are going to be wholesalers like cars. Once you go to the car dealership, you know, uh, when you buy a car, they're going to ask you, do you want to sell your car? That's wholesaling, you know. So, yeah, the first time I heard about wholesaling, it was um, I think it was some guy that had an ad on Instagram and I was like, okay, I'll click this and see what. So it's about he had this trading course, which I never took because it was ooh, ridiculously priced. But I, I did his he'd had this little Q&A session that he did. And I went and listened and I was like, wow, this cannot be this cannot be a real thing. Yeah. <laughs> I went to look it up, and sure enough, it's I finally understood why people keep calling me to ask if I'm trying to sell my house. For sure. For sure. But yeah, yeah. Real estate is, is blowing up in, in Texas at the moment. Um for good or ill, I guess I don't know because house prices are becoming a little bit, a little bit crazy these days. Yeah. But um, so say I'm a home home. Uh, I'm trying to sell my home, right? And I come to uh, now probably it's like we were saying earlier. You do your evaluation, of course. You are planning to sell the home again, so you're you're maybe not going to pay the price that that I see on Zillow. Right. For sure. So how how do you guys how do you guys reconcile the two things? How do you decide? Okay, this is. I mean, without giving away anything proprietary, I guess. How do you decide? Okay, this is how much we're gonna offer for this house based on what we think the current market value for this is. What do you 
also what do you use to determine what the market value is i know lay people like myself will go on zillow and look or redfin but how much can you actually trust that compared to stuff like i don't know the tax tax assessed value or something uh what do they call those guys uh that come out to do a an assessment what do they call oh yeah the appraisers yeah something an appraiser might give you so where, where do you what's the what's the nice mix that you use to come up with that for sure so uh just to start, um, when it comes to Zillow, it's always kind of like a running joke and just like the real estate, uh, you know, like industry that like Zillow really doesn't know what they're doing. And uh, we've seen that in the last few months because, you know, they were like one of the huge like eye buyers. And uh, just a few months ago or a couple months ago, it, uh, they had, a, I guess, like a press release come out saying that, oh, their uh, eye buying sector is about to go away because the houses that they were buying. They were buying them uh, like way over value and uh, their company's basically in the toilet right now because of that. <laughs> the values that they were trying to have is like they were basically like made up values, especially in Texas, because um, Texas is a non-disclosure state, which basically means um, when you sell your house, um, you're not going to know uh, really truthfully unless you're on the MLS. It's not public uh, information how much you sold your house for. So Zillow, they just be making up numbers, you know, and that's what really got them in trouble. But uh, to your question, when you uh, ask, like, how do we get our number? Uh, we basically we run comps on what has been sold in the neighborhood. And the way that we're able to run comps is we work with realtors and my business partner. She's actually a realtor as well. So she goes on the MLS. She'll see what has sold in that neighborhood and um, not just what is sold, but what the actual house looked like when it sold. So did they remodel the house or did they sell the house as is when it was on the market? And what was the price that they sold it at? So when we go on there, we're able to see, okay, this house sold for X amount. Um, the house that we're looking to purchase in the neighborhood looks like whatever it looks like. It's the as is value of the house that sold for X amount. So uh, we would just do, do we would not do, deduct well i guess you yeah, had deduct or subtract or whatever the amount of repairs that are needed plus the uh profit margin that we need to uh come up with our value so if the house is worth um let's say two hundred thousand or whatever and um the um the house is worth two hundred thousand and the repairs on the home is like i don't know forty thousand uh that's already at 160 and then for us to make it like a worthwhile for us, it, we usually have to make around like 15 to maybe 20,000, give or take, just because, you know, we're doing it for like a month, month and a half with the remodels, just depending. And we're taking on all the liability with the house as well. So um, the offer on a $200,000 home would be closer to around like maybe 140, 135, give or take, you know depending on uh, what the quality of the home is in the neighborhood. Okay. okay. That, that's assuming that the home is requiring some work. Yeah, case. exactly. Now, if yeah. the home doesn't require any work, usually uh, our first step uh, when we're actually going to a house or when, when we're talking to a homeowner, we ask them like, hey, have you talked to a realtor? And um, if they say yes or no, we ask them why. And the reason we do that is because like, we want to give you all the options you have um, possible. So you don't think like, oh, like you're just selling it just to us just because you didn't know any of your other options. Like we're going to give you every option that we possibly have until it gets to us. So we'll sit, sit, tell you to uh, talk to a realtor or, you know, list it. You say, oh, I don't want to list it or whatever um, because of whatever the, the problem is. Then you can start working with us and we'll give you some other options when it comes to like whatever your situation is. No. Okay. Okay. That's a lot of questions, but uh, I guess before we go further, let's uh, break down a little bit for some of the listeners here. So uh, when you say you're running comps, what you mean is uh, you're you're comparing the what you think the value is to the values of other houses in the neighborhood. Correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, what is the MLS? I've seen that. I know I've seen that somewhere, but I'm not sure exactly what it is. Yeah, it's the multiple listing site service something like that is basically just where all the realtors go and um, they list all of their properties that they have for sale and uh, other realtors can go on there and see what is for sale and that's how they're able to like um, see like what's for sale basically 
Okay. Uh, okay. Market. Okay. I think I've seen, I see, saw that with my realtor before. Sometimes you would find houses there that weren't listed on Zillow yet, or yeah. maybe I saw it on Zillow, but it was already sold and I didn't even know it because it wasn't updated yet. So I think what Zillow does is if you list your house on Zillow and then it gets sold, you get the ownership is transferred. They, t I think they tend to assume that it was sold for the price that you, you listed it for. Exactly. That's part of the reason why some of those values are inflated. And um, I read this article like a few months ago about Zillow's uh, iBuy business that apparently they would they would have, I don't know if, I can't remember if it said they would lower the values or they would, they would go buy houses in the neighborhood, buy them, buy a bunch of houses in that neighborhood collectively, and then over time raise the values of the houses in that neighborhood and then sell them off. And that's how the company was making money. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that's how they got in trouble as well, because like it wasn't working. And the houses that they were purchasing, they were purchasing for, for too much. And basically it came to the point where like they were in the hole. Yeah, that's uh, there's, there's some irony in that there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that's why I tell homeowners all the time, like when you come to me, you tell me like, oh, I see the value on Zillow. Be very wary of it because Zillow doesn't always know what they're doing a lot of times either because their algorithm, they don't have like actual people looking at each home saying, oh, this house is worth this or I'm running comps on this. It's literally just like their algorithm, algorithm making up whatever they believe that the house is worth. Mm -hmm. So are there other sites that you think have more realistic uh, values or is it just uh, is it are those just something to use as a reference in general? For sure. Like uh, I would definitely if I, I'm a homeowner or even like an investor, I would definitely go to the appraisal district, whatever. Like uh, if you're in Dallas is DCAT, Dallas County Appraisal District. And they'll usually have the value of your home that is as is because a lot of people have not remodeled their homes in the last five or 10 years or whatever. So it'll give you a better value of what your actual home is as is. And then if, if you've done like, sorry, if you've done like other like remodels or whatever, you can add a few thousand on top of that. And that'll give you like a solid basis of, of where your home currently is right now. Okay. So say I've, say I've done some remodeling. Do I um do I go to the uh the county and tell them okay hey I made some changes I need to get somebody out here to appraise it to increase the value or something exactly yeah you can definitely do that but a lot of times uh people don't do that because uh the higher your value the higher <laughs> your taxes so most of the time yeah. people will go they'll go to the county and complain that their taxes are too high and be like hey look I haven't done anything to my house this house that sold down the street. Is worth way more than my house, but my house isn't worth that much because I haven't done anything to it. So I need you to lower my taxes. But you can definitely do exactly what you just said. Like, hey, like I need you to, you know, raise up the appraisal value of my home because I've done a lot to it or whatever. Oh, um, so you'd probably you'd probably do that when you're planning to sell the house. Then exactly, so you're not. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. This is so. What I was thinking when I when I saw your model was. Okay, is this something that an average seller might want to do just so they don't have to pay the 8 to 10% in closing costs? Um, uh, after hearing your, your description, I, I don't know. Have you found that that's something that people would like to do? For sure. Or is it just not worth it for them? No, I think it's on a definitely a case-to-case -case basis. And like I always tell people, like, we're not going to be the best option for everybody. Like, there are some homes that sometimes somebody will call me and they'll tell me, like, hey, I got a house for sale, blah, blah, blah. Maybe it's like five years old or whatever. They don't really need anything done to it. So I'm not going to give you, like, a, a price that I can give you because, like, the price that I'm going to give you is not even going to be worth it unless you need to, like, just sell it, like, right now. It, it'd be better for you just to go and give it to a realtor and the realtor can, you know, take their time, market it. And, you know, you can get it sold within 45 days or whatever. But if you need to get it sold right now or, you know, um, maybe you're going through a situation where you don't have any equity in the house, but you need to, like, leave, then we can make that work as well with, like, owner financing or something like that. So, like, we're the ones that give you more options on what you can do if you're in situations where you have to get it sold, but you can't really go the traditional route or you don't want to pay, like you said, that 6% uh, to your realtor. But if your house is in good condition, I definitely tell you just to list it on the uh, on the MLS and 
see what happens. Okay. And then uh maybe as a as a further recourse they can come back to you if they're not able to to get it sold or at least get it sold to that price. For sure. Yeah. We've had a few people do that where it's like um they they wanted a huge price for their house and we basically told them like you know, your home's not really worth that price, but what we can do is we can, you know, refer you to a realtor. You can work with them. Uh, they can market your home, put it on the MLS. And if it works, it works. If not, you know, you can come back to us and we'll purchase it for that price that we gave you. Okay. Okay. So uh, how do you, I don't know, maybe this question is a little bit close to home, but first thing I, I, I thought when I was thinking this is, okay, so when you got started, how did you start to finance these purchases? Is Are you doing some, um, some what do they call it? They call them hard money or I can't remember exactly what they call it. Are you doing some hard money loans to finance these purchases and then paying back on the back end? Or how did you get started with this? Yeah, for sure. So when we first started, we weren't actually purchasing the homes. We were just like wholesaling, like we were talking about earlier. So we, we yeah. built up a, a nice, you know, nice little stack from there. And when we actually started actually purchasing the homes ourselves, um, we did like leverage hard money. And sometimes we just bought it just like straight cash, just like from us. But uh, one of the advantages for us using hard money is if if you have $100,000, you know, and um, uh, you have one house that's worth that you're purchasing for, I don't know, $60,000, you can only purchase that one house for $60,000 with, with that 100000 but if you have three homes that, that you can purchase for sixty thousand dollars, that hard money most of the time you only have to put down you know twenty thousand per home. So like that's sixty thousand altogether. But you're purchasing three homes, so you're able to leverage that hundred thousand dollars a lot uh, more than you know just purchasing one home with just the cash that you have. No, because that allows you to to scale faster, basically. For sure. Yeah. So how do how does somebody go about? finding these lenders uh, the, what are the pitfalls to to avoid what are the lessons learned along the way here yeah so uh hard money is, is definitely great but if it's your first time fixing and flipping any type of home or you know it's your first investment home they're definitely going to charge you a lot more because they uh understand that you're inexperienced and they're basically betting that you know or hoping that that you can you know follow through on what you're saying, and if you don't, then um, they'll end up taking the house back. So the way that hard money usually works is you usually have um, they'll give you like a six to twelve month term, or sometimes it's uh, you know a three to six month or six to twelve months, or sometimes they'll give you like two years depending on how big the project is, and um, the amount that you're going to have to put down usually varies on uh, sometimes your credit score. And also uh, the amount of experience that you have, like I said before. So some of the pitfalls that people fall into is not understanding that when they say in those documents that uh, if you don't have this home sold by the end of your term or whatever, we can really take your home back. They'll really, you know, <laughs> like foreclose mm -hmm. on the house and like take the home back no matter how far you've gotten. No matter if you've like done the whole remodel and it's on the MLS, they're able to like take the home back from you because of... Um, you're not repaying the uh, loan in full. Hmm. Okay. So uh, if I'm trying to do this, for instance, I, I'm i guessing that I'd want to do this under my company's name and not not uh, trying to get this loan on my own name, correct? For sure. A lot of times, hard money, they'll, they'll require you to have an LLC. Uh, there are some that will let you purchase it with just like your, you know, your name or whatever. Most, but most of the time, they want you to purchase it with their with your LLC because it kind of like limits your liability or whatever when it comes to like if you're getting sued or anything like that. Okay. So uh, I guess moving forward, talking about the future, do you, do you plan to branch out into other areas like acquiring property for rentals or? Are you planning to stay in the in the fix and sell yeah. line of things? Yeah, so uh, we do it all right now. We uh, fix and flip, and we have uh, buy and holds right now. And uh, you know, like I was saying before at the very beginning, like all of our um, all of our businesses kind of like coincide. So our uh, you know now property investments is actually the owner of like a lot of times the residential properties that we have for able assisted 
and able assisted, you know, you know, it kind of like goes back and forth. So, yeah, we're in a, a few different sectors of real estate. And um, I don't know if we'll ever hit like commercial because it's not really that attractive to me, truthfully. Uh, but anything residential, we're pretty much in. Okay. Okay. So have you ever thought about going into more short term renting types or is, is that a little bit too unstable for for what you're trying to do? Oh, like Airbnb, VRBO? Yeah. Yeah, uh, we've looked at it before, but uh, I'm I'm the type of person where it's like I really want to get really good at, at what I'm doing before I branch out. So like the assisted living, we just started that this year. And before we like branch out to like anything else, like the short term rentals or whatever, or even like we've even looked at like event spaces and those event spaces, people are killing it in event spaces yeah. right now, like making a lot of money. Like uh, later in 2022, I'll be uh, getting married or whatever. So we were looking at, at wedding venues and these people sometimes are making like $80,000 a week just off of like off of weddings is like or just regular events whatever without even any decorations it's like it's crazy but uh yeah the short-term rentals those have been very uh popular the last few years but we haven't really um we haven't really like dove into those just simply because like i said we kind of focus on what we're good at and you know if we have time then we'll we'll space out to other things um, okay Cool, cool. There's there's time to grow into other spaces. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a group group of friends who wanted to so they've been we've been talking about, okay, we want to get started with doing fix and flips. Um and kind of have a basic idea of how it works. You know, you get you I guess we want to set up an LLC, okay, we want to secure a, a loan uh, after we've you know identified what properties we want to get. But then there's the question of, we you know, without just going from a common sense point of view, which might not be the best way to go since there's no experience in the field necessarily, how do you select the kind of houses you want? Um, how much do you offer? And most importantly, I think for me, the most important part of the whole thing is contractors. Yeah. Who can you trust? How is it going to work? How do you create your relationship with them? All of those things. So you're, say you were starting out today from scratch but you have the knowledge you have right now how would you how would you go about setting up something like this so the first thing that i would do if i was looking to get into like fixing and flipping is um i would join a lot of these uh real estate facebook groups and get on there there's a bunch of wholesalers the deals aren't always great but there are you know some pretty good deals in there sometimes that'll pop up or even if you can just get on some like wholesalers list and uh, just start like looking at deals every single day. They'll be sending you a bunch of deals every single day. So uh, one thing that you want to look at when we're talking about just like properties in general and what's a good deal, what's a bad deal is you want to know what neighborhoods are, are pretty popular. And there are different like little heat maps and stuff like that on Google. You can look up like, uh, you know, most popular cities in Dallas or in Fort Worth or wherever, you know, you want to fix and flip it. And uh, it'll show you like where people are like buying and selling homes at like a rapid pace. You really want to be in, in, you know, one of those like cities or communities. And uh, from there, when the different like wholesalers start sending you um, like different properties and stuff like that, you can even tell them like, hey, I need properties in 75212 or something like that, whatever zip code that, that you think is like one of the hottest zip codes. And from there. Uh, they'll start sending you deals, sending you deals. And sometimes um, when you first start, like you don't even have to like purchase a deal. Just go out and look at, at the different homes. They'll have like different times where they'll say like, hey, yeah, we'll have an uh, open house for you to come through and we'll walk through and look at the house. Just go out, check out the homes and do that a few different times just to get your feet wet. And the more that you do that, the more you'll start seeing what you really want to do. So if, if this is your first time fixing and flipping, I would definitely uh stay with something that's more like a cosmetic flip which is basically just like painting you know floors and um uh maybe hardware uh, if you have to do like um maybe like cabinets or something like that but you don't want to do anything crazy where like the foundation is messed up or uh, like the roof is like in terrible condition you just really want to stick to the basics on your first flip so uh when it comes to numbers um if it's your first flip i would definitely um 
uh, work with uh, someone that's already done it before, maybe like, I don't know, like, you know, someone that's experienced or whatever. And uh, when it comes to like uh, them running the numbers with you, just like I said earlier, you if it's like a $200,000 home or whatever, usually you want to purchase around like 60% to like the uh, after repair value. So, you know, uh, 60% of 200,000 is what like, um, I don't know, like what, 120 give or take, yeah. And then, you know, if it's a cosmetic flip, you're really not gonna be over like 25,000 give or take. So all together, you'd be up around like 145. And if you could sell it for 200, uh, usually after like roaster fees and everything like that, you end up making like close to around 20,000. So that'd be like a nice little uh, solid flip to start off with. And to make sure I captured all that well, you said sixty uh, percent of the after after repair value is what you want to target, not the value that you're actually purchasing it for. Exactly. Mm, yeah, that's interesting. So you have to make all those estimates to try to, you know, I don't want to use the word guess, but make an educated guess on how much you can sell it for after after the repairs. For sure. Which in real estate, really everything is like a guess, you know, and, and it's all very opinionated when it comes to like the values because you'll have one appraiser come into your house and they'll say your house is worth 200000 but you might have another one come in and say it's worth one sixty. you know? So it's like, it's really uh, like a opinion, like a bias type of like, um, value when it comes to like real estate truthfully uh-huh. okay, okay fair enough fair enough so there's a lot of people i know that are very interested in this in this space but there isn't a lot of uh at least there's there isn't a lot of obvious start here beginner situation for for this for this space not like i, I know like airbnb and vrbo the whole short-term rental thing Maybe it's because that's what I've been looking at for the past two years, but I see stuff about it everywhere, literally everywhere I go, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's the, you know, the algorithms that are They're putting this stuff in my face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But I, I don't know what I was doing at YouTube. I was picking somebody up from the airport. This was about two two years ago. I was picking somebody up at the airport and I was like chilling at the Starbucks by the airport because her flight hadn't landed yet. And I was just on YouTube looking at a bunch of things. And I found this video about Airbnb. I was like, okay, I, mean, I guess I'll... I think I was looking at videos of just like different uh, businesses to get into. And I found one, then led me to the other one. I was like, okay, I'll watch it. And it was this channel called Airbnb Automated. Yeah. And the guy was talking about... He was talking about rental arbitrage for Airbnb. Basically uh, renting a place and then getting permission to rent it on Airbnb. And I watched that and I was like, what? This is this is possible. This is legal. I didn't, I didn't even know that. Like, okay, I definitely need to do this. That was kind of how I hopped into the Airbnb thing two years ago. And then um, after looking around and talking to a bunch of apartment buildings, I realized, okay, it's not so easy to find apartment buildings that yeah. let you do this. <laughs> definitely not. And I think I saw to where um, some guy was talking about, like, basically, they don't ask the apartment complex. They just basically... Because they say if you ask them, they most of the time they're gonna say no because it's in the lease that you can't have short term rentals or whatever. But it's kind of like um, if you provide value or something like that to the short to, uh, to the apartment complex, and, and over time they'll end up being cool with it or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's it's kind of so, crazy. Yeah. yeah so, so at that I, point, I I was I finally found one place that I thought allowed it. I looked through your Google reviews and everything. The guests were complaining about Airbnb parties. Like, oh, okay, yes. this, is, this is the place. I got to the place and it turns out they changed their management like a few months before and they weren't allowing it anymore. Dang. So did you, so at that did you point, get the apartment? Say again? Did you get the apartment? No, no, I did not get the apartment. Oh, okay. So at that point I was like, you know what? I'm done with this apartment thing. I'm just going to go the house route. Yeah. And that was how I got my place. And then eventually I, I rented it out to tenants for a while before I decided, okay, I started the Airbnb thing, which I started in June of this year. So recently I, I came across some new information. Um, just, uh, I think, how did I find, I found one building that allowed it because a friend of mine had a party, their birthday party. And after 
after the birthday party, I said, okay, this place is this place is nice. The apartment is nice. Maybe the neighborhood not so much. I don't know if you know about the Butler Brothers building. Uh, so, no, where is that? It's downtown. It's around Ackard, Irve. You said it's the Butler what? Butler Brothers building. Butler Brothers. I don't know. Yeah. Is it yeah, close you, to the you, Majestic? Uh, I don't really know downtown Dallas like that. It's close to this... Uh, there's this, I don't know if it's like a theater thing downtown. I, I don't know. But I know it's somewhere around Akron or Ray Street. Yeah. Um, um you've you've probably seen it before. It's it's a pretty it's a noticeable building. You've probably seen it before. Maybe you didn't even know it was an apartment building, but probably not. promise you if you go downtown, you've probably seen it before. Yeah. Um it's not like in the nice nicest parts of downtown, but yeah, it's it's kind of nice inside. Their apartments are nice. So after I found that, I called the building and they were like, oh, yeah, we do. We did I call them? No, I, I don't know that I called them. I think I actually went there. So I called them to see um, if they take walk ins or whatever. And then I went there and I talked to them and they were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we allow we allow short term renting. But you're going to pay like a little bit more on rent and you have to pay like two months rent on deposit. And uh, these apartments are like. Two thousand dollars per month, so the deposit is like four four thousand dollars yeah. or something like that. <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to get started with that much liability and do yeah. that." So I went to house route first, and I over time I heard about one or two other places, and I found this uh, course that this guy has on specifically doing this. Although the Airbnb automated guy had the same course, but his course is like, I think his course is like three thousand dollars or something. So I was like, "No, I'm not." I'm not about to do that. Yeah. This guy's score is four hundred dollars. So it's like okay, that's better. But before I did his course, he has this Airbnb masterclass thing. That's what he calls it that he does on Wednesday evenings, and he gave a lot of information. I don't know. Honestly, I f- I feel like he gave away too much information for free yeah. before he even took the course. But so he kind of explained how he finds these places, and. um it was really very simple. I felt so stupid when he explained how he found this. Place. How did he say he found it? So basically, he would go on Airbnb, look for apartments on Airbnb. Like you can filter for apartments, whatever, pick the price range you want or whatever it is that you, you're looking for. Uh-huh. And then when you, of course, you don't get to see the address unless you actually book the property. So if you want to be really extreme, you can just book them and go look at the address and I the evil part of my mind thought about this. I could do that and maybe just cancel later. Yeah. <laughs> but, but but what he explained works too. So you get to click on the map and see where it is, right? The rough area of where it is. So he said he would do that on one screen and on the other screen, or maybe side by side, he'll pull up Google Maps and then pull up the same area and zoom in the same and keep narrowing it down on until he found the building on Google Maps or at least narrowed it down to two or three buildings where that that was the case wow. so when you do that now it's like about elimination so you go there and you ask them and chances are i think these days most hosts actually have permission the chances are you 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 find oh, okay we we do allow it or we don't allow it but it dramatically narrows down your your options because what i what i used to do before was crazy like i think i was looking at apartments on zillow or something and then i would <laughs> go go call them one so calling them usually doesn't work first of all yeah um so that was that was a whole mess um i'm not even i forgot why i got into this airbnb story <laughs> i forgot why i got into this story but that was that was basically how i got sucked into the whole thing so do you okay, have now right yeah, yeah. So I'm still I'm still running Airbnb at the the property I have. Um, what, what is it's that going? Like? What do you mean? Meaning, like, um, when it comes to like, I guess, like, um, how fast do is it getting booked? Where is your Airbnb located? Number one, I guess it's uh, it's in uh, Grand Prairie. It's like around the uh, around the I thirty. Um, what's our road called i30 carrier parkway yeah, yeah. George bush area uh-huh. that area of grand prairie so it's like 10 minutes you're in irving but technically you're in grand prairie i think it's even less than 10 minutes you can get to irving before you know it you're in dallas yeah. so it's a really centralized area it's pretty close to the airport it's pretty close to the stadium too i think it's like a 10 11 
maybe 12 minute drive to the stadium. So I get a lot, a lot of people come book and like somebody just booked for January 1st to the third. And they're like, Oh, we have a coming in town for a football game or something. Yeah. So yeah, it's very nice for that. It's, it kind of opened my eyes to the different groups of people that come that rent on Airbnb. It's people always have this idea that, okay, it's for parties, whatever. But a lot of people that pretty much everybody that rents my property, they're either like, parents coming to visit some relative or their kids or they're coming for a game or something along those lines or they're coming for a wedding or something yeah and i guess people have the idea that hosts i guess there i think there is an automated message because I, I don't really ask them this but typically they'll just say hey we're coming in town for a blah 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 <laughs> and, and that that's how i gathered this information it's not yeah. like i'm quizzing them when they but some some hosts will literally ask you like okay so what, what are you coming in town for yeah and so a lot of hosts are very distrustful of people that live in the same town Oh, so because like parties they, and stuff. Yeah, wow. yeah. Okay. If you live in the same town and you try to book, they're like, hmm, "No, this guy's, <laughs> this guy's probably trying to use this for a party." And I, from experience, now I don't blame them. So, how often but, did, is yours booked? And, and did you choose this location for Airbnb, Airbnb, or what? You just chose just because it was a good deal. So it's a bit of both. Um. I was ideally looking to get something in Dallas. Um, my first, my first thought too was Arlington because of the stadium and all that. Till I, yeah. Um, at some point during my search, it became known to me that Arlington had banned Airbnb in most of the city. Did they? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Yeah. I so there's, there's like a one mile radius around the stadium where Airbnb is legal. The in the entertainment district. Uh huh. I think it's like, uh, I used to know this by heart because I was always searching that area day and night. I think it's like, it's like from Lamar down to Abram and then from Collins or Center to Cooper, Cooper some, something like that. Yeah. Is, yeah. I, no, I think from Center to 360, some, something like that is the area, but it's like a, seems like a one mile radius or something where Airbnb is actually legal. And outside of that, you cannot legally, um have airbnbs That's so crazy. I, I didn't know that I, yeah a lot of people haven't uh, heard that uh, they did it it was really slick when they did it like i almost got a house in arlington before i discovered that yeah. at some point yeah <laughs> yeah so if you're trying to do that uh definitely good idea to do a lot of research in in uh into the laws in the area like i i got kind of lucky because there's a lot of due diligence i did not do and later figured out oh shit like i could have gotten into trouble with this <laughs> i could have gotten into trouble like later on i discovered oh so when you do airbnb you actually have to pay taxes to the city yeah like, oh well i didn't know that wait, before. wait what do you mean you have to pay taxes to the city like so it's like property the tax? state no, they call it a motel tax. That's what they yes. call it. A hotel motel tax. So the state of Texas will take out 6% of your revenue. Uh -huh. And Grand, Grand Prairie, for example, will take 7% of your revenue. You have to pay 7% on your anything you charge guests, the cleaning fee, the extra fee for whatever. It's all included. 7% of that you, you have to pay. Uh, you have to pay on a monthly basis of revenue. Seven percent. That could be a lot. And yeah, I don't know what it's what it is in other cities, but um, that's another thing I didn't know upfront going into it. So there's a lot of little pitfalls, yeah, here and there that you don't hear about. But um, to to circle back, uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested in going the apartment route again. I feel like it's the most scalable way to do to do Airbnb and there's there are people killing it out here, making money, you know, making money hand over fist. For sure. So it's definitely there. But uh, to, to the original rabbit hole that brought me down here, ever since that day, I was consuming that guy's videos like, like nothing. He has a lot of, I guess a lot, these guys give a lot of value. Like most of what I know from about Airbnb is either from doing myself 
or from watching that guy's videos, the Airbnb automated. And I feel like I had a very good understanding of it going in on most things, but he has hundreds of videos. I can't watch all of them, yeah. but there are some things I knew that I didn't need to know yet because, you know, my business hasn't gotten to that point, like how to manage cleaners and how to manage multiple listings. And I didn't need to know all that yet. I only have one, but I watched the video and there's some things I maybe missed, like the motel tax stuff, but he has hundreds of videos out there and it's just, he does have a course and sometimes it makes me wonder what's on the course yeah, if all exactly this in the free, course. free information. Yeah, if all this free information is out here. But yeah, there's a lot of good info there. But with, at least from what I've found, with stuff like fixing and flipping, I haven't come across that Airbnb automated character yet Yeah, that just has all this free game out there. I know you, you, you have a YouTube channel, right? Yeah, but the YouTube channel is really more focused towards like the uh, actual like home buyers though. I mean, homeowners. Yeah. So it's just basically giving them like little tips on, you know, when you should sell, why you should sell, what situations you should sell and should you choose a realtor or a home buyer and what situations. It's basically just for the home owner actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know. I, I did see one or two of them when you first uh, put it on the Discord. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I don't know. Maybe I maybe I haven't looked ardently enough into finding information like that. Like I follow one or two people on Instagram, and I'm like, oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah. I kind of take note of what they do, save some of their posts. But on YouTube, I haven't really searched too much into that kind of information. Maybe because I'm not getting my hands in there yet. Yeah. But I, I don't know. What do you think? Do you think that information is there and I just haven't found it? Or is there a lack of information in the field? You know, I think with fix and flip, I think people think it's so like uh, pretty much cut and dry to where there's probably not a lot of like step by step. But there are probably are people on there that are teaching like what you should do with each step and fix and flip. I think the main thing, though, when you're looking to start fix and flip is you get a good deal. Uh, you get a good contractor and you get a good realtor. You got those three things, you'll be straight, you know, and you get the good deal by networking with people in your community. Uh, that's either by going out to these different like real estate events, which you can find on Facebook or you can find it on. Um, it's like some type of like uh, meetup. Oh, meetup. I think it's called meetup. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You, you can go on there. And then like when you are looking for contractors, you can just go to Lowe's, truthfully. Go to Lowe's or Home Depot. Contractors are always there. They all they always have their cards. And you know, uh, whenever you actually get a home, you um you want to get like three or four different bids from that contractor or from different contractors and see which bid is the best. And not just which bid is the lowest, but also which contractor actually has references uh from like the past. Uh, who you can actually call and say, hey, you know, I'm talking to Bob, the contractor. He said you did his house. Did it work out? Blah, blah, blah. How was the experience? Actually being able to reach back out to those former people. And on top of that, um, a lot of times contractors, they'll put you in their queue of jobs that they have to do. So you might say, hey, I'm purchasing this home next week. Um, can you, you know, be my contractor? I like your bid. They'll be like, yeah. But what they won't tell you is that they have three other jobs lined up and they probably won't be able to get to your job for another month. And, you know, when it comes to fix and flip, time is money. You know, it, yeah. it, if you're not on the ball with um, making sure like all of your ducks are in a row, like you'll literally lose money by, you know, wasting time. And I've done that before. Like one of our first flips, um, our first flip was more like a cosmetic flip or whatever. It was pretty simple. But our second flip, it took us forever because like the contractors that we were with, you know, they were basically like, they were BSing us. You know what I mean? It, it was like, um, it was coming to the point where they say they be at the house at, at one day and we show up and they weren't there. And, uh, you know, the, a lot of times contractors don't ask for a lot of money up front and one of our first flips, we actually gave them like way too much money up front and they didn't finish the job. You know what I mean? So a lot of times you got to really like stay on your P's and Q's with the contractors. And then, like I said, the third thing is having a great realtor that actually sells homes and, you know, has a, a nice network of people. Because a lot of times they'll, uh, people, they'll go to like their family or, you know, they're a family friend or just a friend. And say, oh, yeah, they're a realtor. I'll just use them and they're going to give me a discount. 
But if you go to that realtor and they're going to give you a discount, but they don't really sell homes, they don't have that network to like, you know, reach out to other realtors that are in, you know, in the marketplace that are, that have great buyers. And it's like, you just giving your, your house to a realtor, they're just going to put it on the MLS and they're just going to be at the house chilling, waiting for their phone to ring. You know what I mean? You really want you, you really want to get a realtor that's like really pay, uh, pounding the pavement and they're out there like actively searching for buyers, searching for realtors that have buyers and you know, like they, they're just as hungry as you are to get your house sold. So if you have those three things right there, you know, uh, when you're like fixing and flipping, you'll definitely be good out here. Yeah, th that's another thing that's uh, blowing up at the moment, uh, becoming a real estate, uh, well, a realtor. Yeah. And I thought about it for like five minutes and then I thought, okay, so I could probably take the classes. I could probably get the license. But then I actually have to sell the house. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> one thing that most people don't realize is they think uh, being a realtor is like just super easy, super passive. And like I just told you, just from that example, like a lot of times they'll get their realtor license and uh, they'll, uh, you know, the realtor's license costs, number one, the courses cost, the, the class costs, and like the actual test costs money. And then after you get your license, you go to a brokerage. And that brokerage, they're going to uh, charge you every single month. Uh, you know, there's going to be different fees depending on whatever broker you go to. But they're going to charge you every single month, no matter if you sell a house or you don't sell a house. And if you do sell a house, they're going to charge you on top of that as well. So it's like a lot of times, uh, I think the turnover rate with realtors are like, I think it's like three to six months after they get their license, they're done because they realize it's not as easy as people want it to be. <laughs> And, uh, you know, if that pipe pipeline's not going, you're losing money. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to really be like a hustler if you're a realtor when you're first starting out. Like once you get a few deals under your belt, then you'll start having a bunch of different referrals. And it's like, oh, it's easy then. But if you're not like really pounding that pavement to begin with, it's like you're definitely going to lose money. And you're going to think like, oh, being a realtor is like lame. It's a scam or whatever it might be, whatever you might think it is. Yeah, every everything's a scam when people get hurt. Yeah, so. <laughs> exactly. 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 So, um, I don't know if this already exists or not. Like, I know there's this guy I know on Instagram. He's like a friend of a friend. I think I've met him once or twice, and he does he does flips. I think he was one of the first people that got me thinking about it. like, oh, okay, this looks like. This shit actually looks it looks it looks like it's lucrative. It looks like it makes sense. Yeah, legit. And he had this uh he had this one time thing. I think it was just a one time thing where he was like, Okay, um I'll if you guys pay for this course, I'll take you out to the place, show you like from top to bottom how I did the flip or whatever. And I was like, Hell yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I can't I I can't remember what happened. But I, I couldn't make it. I couldn't make that particular one. I, and I thought, okay, he's going to have another one. He's going to have another one. He's going to have another one. It's been three years. He hasn't had another one. <laughs> he hasn't had you paid for it? No, no, I didn't pay for it oh, yet. Oh, but okay. it's like, I, it just seemed like such a unique experience. So he made a he, he made an ebook recently. Uh, I think that was like early last year. And I was so excited for it to come out. Like I got the ebook and everything. I read it. Yeah, it picked up a few things here and there, but didn't quite have the meat and information that I wanted. And he lives also, he lives in Atlanta. So I think he mostly operates in Atlanta. So I don't know if there are any differences there or anything. Um, but apart from the groups, like you were saying, I, I am part of some of those meetups and I don't know about Facebook groups, but I know I'm in a couple of meetups that I just never went to for some reason. <laughs> I, I joined them when it first caught my interest and I was always like, Oh yeah. When I, you know, when I have time and when I get some of this capital up, I'll, I'll start going to those. But maybe I should just go just to see what's just to see what's going on Definitely. there. Yeah. And but, when I go to some, I'll, I'll hit you up and let you know, like, hey, I'm going to this one or whatever if you want to come. Oh, OK, cool. For sure. For sure. Let me know. Let me know. I'm definitely interested in picking up more knowledge in that area. But it would be really nice to have like the, the Airbnb guy I was talking about, the guy that does the master class on Wednesdays. Uh, when you take his course every now and then, so it's not just the course, they have a network and they have realtors in the network. And sometimes a realtor gets a deal like, hey, there's this apartment building, blah, 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 and get you a good price. And then like 10, 15 of them go together and they go there. Maybe they already have the LLC set up and everything. They all go there, sign leases to pick up units. Yeah, And it's nice. And sometimes they'll, while they're there, 
like I haven't actually experienced this, but my friend had told me about the course. She told me about about this. So they they will go there. Like one time they had one in Houston. They went over there. Like ten of them went, picked up units. They gave them the crash course on how to stock the units. This is how you stock it up. This is how you do this. Do that. Do that. Do this. And by the time they went back home, their units were set up. And yeah, that was I was like, okay, that's what sold me on the course. Hey. I was like, okay, now I'm gonna definitely like I probably know what's most of what's in the course but the network is what i want yeah is what i really want so something like that for house flipping would be amazing like just the okay um this is how much the course is 10 of you show up and we'll just do from the ground up you watch me do it from ground up this is how i do it blah blah blah. this is the contractor this we're showing up today this is what they're doing this is how you get it done this is how i signed the deal everything like yeah. nuts and bolts and everything that would be that would be amazing. I, I don't know if uh, you guys have considered going into that area of things, a little bit more of education in that area. Maybe not even necessarily as a, might not even necessarily be like a huge income, source of income, but maybe just putting information out there to get people to, you know, so get your some eyes on your business. But maybe you could turn it into an income thing too. If people were really serious about it, I think people would pay like a thousand dollars for a course like that if they're really serious about it. Yeah. Is that something that you think you might consider or is that just taking you too far out of what your business does? You know, uh, I say, I say yes and no, uh, because so to me, I think I'd rather do something kind of like this where we're like talking and, you know, I can just like give you all like whatever I know about whatever subject that we're talking about rather than yeah. me actually, I guess like at this time right now, because my time right now is kind of like worth more than, you know, any type of monetary value that I could possibly get. You know, I think in the future when I have like a lot more time to like, uh, you know, I'm not like doing a bunch of different things at the same time. I think I'd be like, okay, yeah, now it's time for me to like settle down. I can really like start like building and making courses or like inviting people out or whatever. But at the time right now, it's kind of like if I was to like slow down and start having people come through the houses and stuff like that, it would kind of like slow down my process. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, okay. That makes sense. Yeah. But, but that's a great idea. I really like that idea. And, you know, maybe in the future I'll actually do that. And I I was actually thinking about that the other day when it comes to even like my assisted living, because a lot of people don't, don't realize that, you know, uh, the residential assisted living is like, it's hot. It, it's super hot. And to the point where um, uh, residential assisted living, like little regular homes, like we purchase regular homes and regular communities and we uh, place seniors in there. We put them in there with CNAs and, you know, they do activities and blah, 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 all that great stuff. And uh, those residential assisted living homes outperform 20 plus apartment complexes when we're talking about cash on cash returns. So like I was thinking maybe in the future I might do something like that where I'm uh, giving people like a ground up of how, you know, you purchase a property, you uh, get the actual assisted living going, you fill the house and everything like that, just in, you know, Dallas, Fort Worth. Yeah. That's uh, one of the funny things about that is there's some business models I hear about and it's just like, no way that makes money. Like there's, there's no way yeah. it, it sounds so mundane, but you'd be surprised how much money people, people make doing. I think a lot of people over uh, myself included, sometimes we'll overlook businesses like that because it doesn't, it just doesn't sound cool or attractive. And exactly. Until you actually look at the numbers and you're like, Oh, okay. Right. This is, yeah, this is actually something going on there. Yeah. The numbers are crazy when it comes to residential assisted living. And then even bigger than that is uh, when it comes to like residential assisted living, we're actually making a huge impact on not just the residents, but also the caregivers. Because a lot of times when people are, at like nursing homes and stuff like that. These caregivers that are there, these CNAs that are there at these nursing homes working, they're, they actually care about like the resident. They're not just there for the money because a lot of times they don't make a lot of money. Like they usually have a heart for the actual seniors. And, and the sad part about that is they go to these nursing homes or these huge big box facilities where they have hundreds of people in there. And it's usually one CNA to like maybe 16, 20. I even talked to one CNA. She was like, there was like, she was taking care of like almost 30 people at once. And it's like, when you're doing that, like you're putting your, your, if you 
or putting your grandma, grandpa, your mom or dad in a facility like this, you don't know that they're not getting, they're not being seen for like hours and hours and hours. So maybe they're like sitting down in like, you know, their, you know, their mess or whatever for hours because not because the CNA doesn't care about them, but just simply because they didn't have time to get to each of them, you know? So the great part of yeah. like us when it comes to residential assisted living is, we're one to five, uh, one CNA to five people. So everybody's being seen all the time. You know, there's not something that's going to be happening where it's like, you're just like, you had an accident, you're laying in it for hours and it's like, oh man, like what happened? You know, like everything is, is we're like on top of it. You know what I mean? And it's, it's a lot friendlier when it, when it uh, comes to like seniors as well, because they're not going from like a regular house to like a huge apartment complex that they've never lived in before. You know what I mean? So it feels more like at home and the community is a lot uh, closer. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's good. It's, I think that's, it's, it's very different because one, I've always wondered about nursing homes and uh, what do they call them? Um, assisted livings, what they call, assisted livings, retirement homes and all yeah. that. Cause I, even, even as a stereotype, it always seems like, there's neglect there and maybe not, like yeah. you said, maybe not intentional neglect, but they're understaffed. So exactly. it's, it's just gonna, it's just gonna be what happens. But yeah, that's, 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 that's another lesson to maybe not judge a book by its cover. Cause if I had seen a, if I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw a course on assisted living, I was like, I would have been like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> like I said before, like, like when we talk about like people, they'll go out and they'll purchase like these apartment complexes that are like 30 units, 20 units, 40 units. These small, regular houses, one house outperforms those uh, like huge apartment complexes, you know? And uh, when it comes to like the amount of like um, the amount of stuff that you have to actually do to that one house compared to like 30 units of apartments it's like it, it, the the business model is a lot better truthfully and we're yeah. coming to the point where by 2029 so you know the baby boomers the people that were born you know within i think it was like uh, 45 through like 1961 or something like that that's like one of the largest generations of kids that ever came through like you know it's like one of the largest generations ever it's also one of the wealthiest generations ever. And by 2029, uh, they're going to need around like 2.3 million beds nationwide. Currently, right now, they only have like 1 million beds nationwide. And th the huge problem is we only generate like 20,000 new beds per year. So just from that, mm -hmm. you can see like the huge deficit that we have in assisted living and the huge market cap that we'll have by the time we get to 2029 too, because... A lot of those people that are baby boomers, uh, like my dad, he's a baby boomer and he's uh, I think he just turned 60. You know what I mean? So it's like these baby boomers are young and they're the largest generation. And we're going to have a huge senior population. A lot of times we were like uh, as Americans, we were like so focused on like the younger population. By the time we get to, closer to like 2030, we're, our main focus is going to be on seniors because that's going to be the majority of people in this world. Yeah, there's, there's there's a vacuum there for sure. Yeah, it's uh, I think I I read somewhere that by, I think that this was a further outdate, like by 2040 or something, there would be more people on Social Security than people actually working to pay into Social Security, exactly. or something like that. Exactly. I was like, what the hell? You know what I'm saying, so it, it's yeah. a huge but, industry. Well, this uh, this model it, it has to have some sort of extra liability to it, no? Because you're working with seniors and all that. Yeah, it, it definitely does. And uh, like I said before, you know, it's definitely not for everybody. You know, everybody shouldn't. It's not like a get rich quick scheme, but it's one of those things where if you, you know, you do the right thing and you uh, you really put your heart into it and, and you lead with like actually wanting to care for the seniors. Number one, your business is going to grow uh, to a substantial amount and, um, you know, it'll really be something that you'll look back on and you'll be like, man, like not only is it valued higher than uh, like all these other, like, um, you know, at sectors of real estate, but you're also making a better, a huge, a bigger impact on people. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice when you have something fulfilling going on. Yeah. 
Okay, so uh, I, I don't know why I always do this. I said 40 minutes to an hour, but we're, <laughs> we're way past an hour now. Um, but anyways, just to just to wrap up, I guess, um, is there any any nuggets you want to leave uh, people with? Any If you want to plug in something for Now Investments, now's the time. Also, you can send me any information you want me to put on the show notes. I think I had your Instagram page. Um, I can probably find the YouTube and your website. Um, anything else you want me to put on there uh, would be great if you're doing some kind of promo or anything going on, really. Okay, yeah. So, um, <coughs> sorry. <clears throat> uh, when it comes to nuggets, um, I always tell people what whatever that you, you're going to do, whether it be, you know, if you're going to be in real estate, tech, whatever it is, consistency is key. I see so many people they'll hop into, you know, an industry thinking that they're going to get money really quickly and they get in there and it doesn't happen as fast as they want it to. And, uh, you know, they quit. And if I did that right now, like I'd be in the hole. Like when we first started, like it, it was, it was tough, you know, it was hard, but we just kept, like I say, uh, like I like to say, we like to put, just put one foot in front of the other and just keep going, you know? And um, when you find a model that you really care about, if you're consistent with it, you're going to make money, you're going to grow, and, and it's going to, and the biggest thing is going to be, it's going to be even more fulfilling for you. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much the nugget. And uh, if you want to reach out to me, um, you can reach out to me on Instagram at realneil24. Um, if you're looking to sell your home, uh, we do purchase properties all over, really Texas, but uh, Dallas, Fort Worth to be, uh, to be specific. And you go to our website, www.nowpropertyinvest.com. And on there, it'll give you all the information. And if you have maybe a senior, maybe you have your parent or your grandpa or whatever, they're looking to move into like an assisted living home. Uh, you can go to our website, ableassisted.com. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, um, starting up a fund. Uh, I can't really say too much about that, but uh yeah. Right. Hey, uh, me on too. This has been fun. No worries. I appreciate you coming on. This is definitely interesting. And one of one of the things I like most about these sessions is I I tend to learn so much from whoever it is I'm talking about talking to. That's why I don't I don't necessarily have a bunch of them because I'm not just trying to crank out episodes for the sake of episodes. I I want I want to you know have episodes where people actually come away with something actually learn something and sometimes it's a little bit maybe i haven't just set up the machine right yet but it's a little bit hard for me to locate people to have these conversations with but uh, i don't know what i was thinking one day i was like hey i think i was on the discord one day just trying to see what's going on i was like hey yo yeah i forgot news yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was like okay that would that'll definitely make for a good conversation for sure well yeah thanks thanks for hopping on um i'll i'll uh, put all this stuff on the show notes again you you can send me like anything uh websites links you want me to put on the show notes i'll go ahead and add that there and uh can link some of them on instagram when i do put this up as well but uh cool. thanks again for uh taking the time out i mean from your background it looks like you're 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 at your office or something <laughs> yeah it's just my little poster that i have with uh whenever i'm making videos and stuff like that oh okay okay <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay yeah i don't want to take too much time away from work but yeah thanks again for taking the time i uh, appreciate it uh we'll definitely have more conversations on, on this in the future if you're going to one of those uh real estate meetups definitely let me know sure. and uh um just uh the sec is not involved we can have the conversation about the fund <laughs> off <laughs> offline another time <laughs> all right cool that works all right, man. Thanks for hopping on. All right. Thanks for having me. Right. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Talk to you.